Now, but I want to just jump in today. We're in part two of a series that we kicked off on Corporate Sunday called Limitless. Everybody shout Limitless. And uh, I'm excited to share this with you. So uh, I want you to open your Bible and if you would uh, turn to the book of Mark, all right? To the book of Mark, um, chapter 10, all right? The book of Mark, chapter 10. And we're going to jump into this together today. We're going to read a few verses here. I have to just keep coming and coming from behind that. I don't know where all these musicians are coming from. All right, Mark chapter 10. Um, we're going to read from verse 46. If you find it, say yes. All right, Mark 10, 46. We'll read together. This is the story of uh, blind Bartimaeus. The Bible says, uh, Then they reached Jericho, and as Jesus and his disciples left town, a large crowd followed him. And a blind beggar named Bartimaeus, which means the son of Timaeus, was sitting beside the road. Right? And when Bartimaeus heard that Jesus of Nazareth was nearby, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Be quiet, many of the people yelled at him, but he only shouted louder, Son of David, have mercy on me. And when Jesus heard him, uh, he stopped and he said this, tell him to come here. And so they called the blind man. They said, hey, cheer up. Everyone say cheer up. Some of you need this word this morning. Come on, say cheer up. Cheer up. Poke your neighbor a little bit. Tell him, hey, cheer up. Cheer up. We'll be grumpy in church. It's a good day. Come on. Good day. He said, cheer up. Come on, he's calling you. And Bartimaeus threw aside his coat, right? Jumped up and came to Jesus. And Jesus said to him, what do you want me to do for you? Right? What do you want me to do for you? My rabbi, my, my teacher, master is what it means. The blind man said, I want to see. So I want you to picture this. Bartimaeus throws aside his coat. He stumbles to Jesus. He's blind. So he's trying to find his way toward him. And many people are telling him, it's this way, it's this way. He finally gets to Jesus. And then Jesus, what do you want me to do? And Bartimaeus makes this incredible statement. He says, Master, I want to see what I really want. What is in my heart, my desire, what I'm believing for, what I came to talk to you about, what I think you can help with is I want to see. And the Bible says, Jesus said to him, go for your faith has healed you. And instantly the man could see and he followed Jesus down the road. Isn't that cool? Isn't that an amazing story? So I mean, don't think it's amazing. Wouldn't it be amazing if a blind person walked into church this morning and walked out seeing and following Jesus? Come on. This is incredible. And for Bartimaeus, life-changing moment in the presence of God. I believe that every time we get in the presence of Jesus, there's a life-changing opportunity. Somebody shout amen. amen. Every time we gather in His name, every time Jesus is among us. And the Bible says when we gather in His name, Jesus is here. Not, not the memory of Jesus, the real living Jesus. Our God is not dead, He is alive, right? And Jesus is here today, and that means if Jesus is here, miracles can happen. If Jesus is here, transformation can happen. If Jesus can hear, is here, then limitations have to go from our lives. One more scripture, and then I'm going to jump into this. We read it a couple weeks ago. 1 John chapter 5 uh, says this. Uh, for everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Isn't that a great scripture? For this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. And everyone who's been born of God, everyone that has Christ in their heart, overcomes the world. You know, this year, we think that you're the year of the overcomer. And I believe this scripture is a key scripture that God wants to fulfill in your life today and in my life as well. And we're going to jump in and begin to talk a little more about what it means to live a life without limits. We defined overcome uh, a couple weeks ago, and this is literally uh, what the definition of the word overcome means. It means to get the better of in a struggle or conflict. That in your life, how many you know in life sometimes there's a conflict? Right? Hopefully not with the person you're sitting next to, uh, but sometimes. 
You know, if you've ever been in church and the person next to you is encroaching a little bit, they're a little over their chair and they're kind of on your chair and there becomes a small conflict and you, you need to subtly sort of get them back into the zone. But this is talking about real struggle. Maybe you've got a struggle in finance. Maybe there's a struggle relationally in your family. It could be in your workplace. Uh, it might be in your emotions or your mindset. But in life, there are struggles and there are conflicts. And yet Jesus promises, he says, hey, I've overcome the world, and you also can have that same victory and overcome those struggles and conflicts. So when we say God wants to make us overcome, what are we talking about? We're talking about God coming and bringing a breakthrough and you actually getting the better of the conflicts that are in your life. Are, are you with me? That, that I don't have to walk away bitter. I don't have to walk away affected. My life isn't going to end up in ruins. No, God is with me and he can help me over to get the better of it. It also means to prevail over or surmount. And this is powerful, this idea of overcoming. As we talk about this idea of being limitless and God breaking limits off our life, because God has no limits. Can you shout amen? Amen. Come on, that's a good place to get excited in church today. God has no limits. I mean, if God was limited, we would have a lot of problems. If God only could help you with a few things in life, there would be a problem. And, and, and I would never know, God, can you really help me in this? When I pray, I'm not sure if this request is too much for you to handle, but God has no limits. His very nature is that he is omnipotent. In other words, he is all powerful. He has all power, all authority. The Bible says the name of Jesus is above every other name. Are you hearing me this morning? Some of your problems have a name. Some of your problems have a name. For some of you, your problem is, your student here, your problem has a name. It's called exams, you know? <laughs> it's called, probably called YouTube. You just like, get distracted all the time. Some of you, your problem has a name. It's, a, it's the name of a sickness. Maybe your problem has a name. It's a next door neighbor and you know their name. It's like, oh man, I, that person just bugs me right now. But, but you know what? His name is above every other name. Any problem you can name, Jesus is above that problem. Amen. He's higher than that thing. God has no limit. Yeah. And whatever we, we come in here with today, I believe God wants you to live a life that breaks through the limitations, that overcomes limitations. I'm not talking about self-help. I'm not talking about just positive thinking. I'm talking about literally Jesus coming and miraculously bringing you through the limitations of your life. Bartimaeus did not need a motivational speech that day. Are you with me? He doesn't come up to Jesus and Jesus say, listen, Bart, what do you want me to do for you? And, and, and Bart looks back at him and he says, well, Jesus, I'm just going through a tough time. Uh, I, I need my emotions. I need you to encourage me. I just need a hug. That's not what he needed. He didn't need a pep talk. He needed a miracle in his life, something supernatural that no one else could bring. Don't you know there are moments in your life you need God to touch you supernaturally? There are moments you need God to touch your mind supernaturally. I'm just plagued by these thoughts and pressure and, and just maybe this bitterness from the back. God, I need you to break through. In the natural, I can't break it free, but you can do a miracle and break the limits from my mind. Come on. God, there are moments that I'm limited. I don't have the resource to do what I feel like you're asking me to do. And I need you to come and do a supernatural miracle for me and break the limits off of my life. Well, God is not limited. And I believe that he wants to come and remove limitations from us. And so a couple weeks ago, we talked about this idea of what's holding you back. That many times we're held back from stepping into God's purpose. We're held back from really believing for the things that God has called us. We're held back from really being the people that God has called us to be. And that we, we need to shed that from our lives to step into his purpose and plan. And today I want to go one step further as we talk about part two of this idea of limitless. And I want to ask you this question. Not only what's holding us back sometimes and limiting us, but what is stopping your vision? What's stopping your vision? I, I was, as I was thinking and praying about this, I thought, you know, there's many times we have a hope, a dream, an expectation inside of our heart, but circumstances, situations, sometimes people around us, just the course of life begins to kind of mute and, and limit the vision that was in our heart. 
And literally at one moment there could be such a great expectation and suddenly in the next moment I feel like something has stopped the vision from my life. Have you ever had a vision get lost along the way? Have you ever trusted for something, believed for something, hoped for something, and then it, it, it just seems like it's so far away, it takes so long, doesn't seem to come to pass. The Bible says hope deferred makes the heart sick. That, that it affects us in our heart when we can't see clearly the path ahead. Proverbs says without vision, people perish. They, there's something that happens in our life that's negative when we don't live with vision. And one of the greatest limitations you and I can face is something that is stopping the vision inside of our life. Vision is, is, is this. It's literally the act or power of anticipating that which will or may come to be. I want you to think about this. The act or power of anticipating that which will or may come to be. Now listen to this. Vision is an experience in which a person, thing, or event appears vivid or credibly in the mind. And it often under the power of divine agency. So it says, when I, when I have vision, something appears in my mind. Something awakens inside my heart, and it's real to me. That is vision. And the reason why vision is so important is because vision is the language of faith. Right? right? Vision is, is the way we express faith. Faith, that there's no such thing as faith without some kind of vision in my heart. When I have faith in God, in other words, He's so real to me that I know it. I can see it. I see my life with Him. I know I'm in His hand. I have faith in my heart because vision is the language. When I have faith in God and I believe in God for something, I have a vision for those things. I have a vision for that breakthrough. Vision for my destiny, vision for my family. Why? Because there's faith inside of my heart. I, to have faith without vision is almost impossible. Real faith speaks the language of vision. The Bible says in Hebrews 11, 1, faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It's the evidence of things we cannot see. So I can't see it with my eyes. But in my heart, in my spirit, it's just as real to me as if it was standing right in front of me. Are you with me this morning? That's vision. Everyone shout vision. Vision. Come on, one more time. Everyone say vision. Vision. Oh, you get in agreement with me. Come on, Ruben, come on. Everyone shout vision. Vision. It's the language of faith. And you know, God is a God of vision. Listen to this. Romans 4, 16 and 17 says, so the promise is received by faith. It's given as a free gift, and we are all certain to receive it, whether or not we live according to the law of Moses, if we have faith, okay, pay attention to this, like Abraham. For Abraham is the father of all who believe, right? Father Abraham had many sons. Many sons had Father Abraham. I'm one of them, so you let's just praise the Lord. Amen. Woo, okay. <laughs> That is what the scriptures mean when God told him, I have made you the father of many nations. So, so check out what he's saying. He goes, listen, Abraham became the father of everyone who believed. How? Because he first had faith. He believed. God said, I'm going to make you a father. And in Abraham's heart, suddenly vision when I can see myself becoming a father. I see myself a father of many nations. And now when we see, when we have vision and faith, he goes, we come into that same family. And spiritually, we become the children of Abraham because we, we inherit that same inheritance of faith from him. Let's, let's go to the next slide. I made you the father of many nations. This happened because Abraham believed in the God who brings dead things back to life and creates new things out of nothing. That when there's nothing, I still believe, God, you can make it into something. Come on. When there's nothing in my life, God, you can create something brand new. There's no joy, God, you could create new joy inside of me. But there's no hope, God, you could place hope in my life. Something, there's a vision in my heart that you could help me. God, there's no, no good things happening. There's no future. But God, you create things out of nothing. And I believe in you because I believe all of a sudden vision is awakened inside my life. Are you hearing me this morning? Yeah. This is the power of vision. So because God is a God of vision, this is... The, the realm he operates in, being connected to God means seeing things differently than everybody else. When I'm connected to him, I should have a different perspective. 
When other people say it's impossible, something in my heart should say, it is impossible, but I think my God could do this. Come on. When other people go, it's hopeless, I should say, yeah, it does look pretty hopeless, but you know what? I know a God who brings hope to hopeless situations. I, I just have a different perspective because I'm connected to God. And vision, the, the issue with vision is this, and I want you to catch this as we jump in. It's not supposed to be a one-time experience, but vision should be something that changes the direction and the course of my life. The problem with many of us is that we experience moments of vision, and yet then other things come in to stop that, to limit that, to hand in the vision that was placed in our heart, and we go right back to life as normal. But don't you know Bartimaeus didn't just see for a moment. It changed the direction of his life. He began to see. And once he could see, the Bible says he didn't run home. He didn't go check out the latest supermarket. He followed Jesus on the road. Something changed inside of him. And a lot of times we can become limited in our faith. What I love about the story is that it's the story of a blind man, Bartimaeus. And what's so cool about this is he's surrounded by all these people that can see but that don't have vision. And yet there's this blind man who can't see, but he has vision. He goes, Jesus can help. I, I can see it. Jesus, son of David, I can't, I don't know where you are, but I have a vision. I know, I know you can help me with this. I've never seen you heal a blind person, but I have vision. You can help my life. I've never seen a miracle in my life, but there's something in my heart with faith that Jesus can do this for me. This is this is part of it. It took him out of his routine. It took him out of his culture. It took him out of the ordinary, inside of his life, beyond what he knew. I want you to think, when was the last time we saw something in our spirit? When's the last time we just believed the promise of God? When's the last time my life was awakened with vision? Have things come in to limit the vision in my heart? Was there a time I believed a little more than what I believed today? I expected a little more. I was more ready to just step in and say, God, you can do this. Or, or is there something stopping the vision of my life? Because I believe this year, God wants to take the limitations off and remove those things that would stop vision from your heart. That we would be people that believe, we would be people that see, and we would be people that experience the power of God in our lives. If you believe that, I want you to shout amen. Come on, go ahead and give Jesus a clap. Take a praise, praise, praise. That was all for free. That's not even the sermon. Now we're going to start. <laughs> but don't worry. I can do this quick. What's stopping your vision? What's stopping your vision? Bartimaeus had a problem. His problem, well, he had a few problems. Number one, he was blind. He couldn't see. He had an issue that needed the touch of Jesus that day. But even in wanting to see, and wanting to saw that, you can see so many things that were standing in the way between him and his breakthrough between him and his miracle. And, and what I love about it is it's not just a story of healing, it's a story of a man that broke through limitations because of the vision he had inside of his heart. And I believe he's an example to us today. So I wrote down three things that try to stop Bartimaeus' vision that I think we experience as well in our lives. The first one is this, it's the crowd. The crowd. The Bible says that Bartimaeus was sitting on the side of the road begging. There would have been special places where the beggars gathered at that time. And, and, and they would be in the most strategic points, of course, because you want to get the most people passing by so that you can get the most income, right? As a blind person, there was no other way that he could earn income. And so he's sitting there begging at the thoroughfare. And all of a sudden, the sound comes along that Jesus is passing by. Somebody tells him Jesus is coming this way. We don't know if Bartimaeus had already known of Jesus. Where suddenly they explain to him, oh, Jesus is a miracle worker. And he does healings. He's a powerful teacher. He's a prophet from God. He's a Messiah. But somehow Bartimaeus has this revelation that Jesus is no ordinary man. Because when he starts calling out, he refers to him by a messianic term. He refers to him to, by a Bible term. He says, you're the son of David. Have mercy on me. There's some revelation in his heart. Jesus, you're the chosen one. You're the anointed one. You're the son of God. You're the one we've been waiting for. And I need you to have mercy on my life. And the Bible says he starts shouting. Shouting. I mean, if you ever been near a shouter in church, it's scary. 
They say, just praise the Lord. And he goes, ah! You know, you're like, oh. Most people have like nice little pray, you know, oh, hallelujah. God, you're good. And, you know, I mean, if you've been next to like a really like, they can freak you out, you know. We tend to be a little bit composed most of the time in church. And Bartimaeus starts screaming, Son of David, have mercy. The crowd shouts back at him, Hey, shh, quiet. And the most that he only shouted loud, and they keep telling him, Shut up, be quiet. You're disturbed. I mean, imagine, there's no PA system, there's no video conference, right? And so if he's screaming, they can't hear Jesus. And they're all there to hear Jesus. And so now he's screaming, the crowd's screaming, Jesus, no one's listening to Jesus anymore. Jesus, this is the one miracle that Jesus is not the center of attention because no one knows what he said because everyone was screaming. There's no teaching recorded here. He said, be quiet. And you've got Bartimaeus here with something in his heart. I want to see. I want to see this is a miracle worker. He can help. He's got vision inside his life. This is the Messiah. He heard a word. He heard a rumor. Someone told him a story and... Faith rises up in his heart. This is the one that can help me. I don't know where he is. I don't know exactly where he is in the crowd. He's blind. He can't see, right? But he's just yelling out, have mercy. Have mercy. If he just stops, if he just looks, if I just get his attention, something can happen inside my life. And see, the problem with the crowd is they don't know what God has put in your heart. The crowd is... Just your friends, the people around you, the crowds, your colleagues at work, your neighbors, your, your, your family members. And you can have a moment with God that awakens vision, but they don't know what God put in you. The crowd doesn't understand Bartimaeus. You're just, well, you're just after more money. You're just trying to be a pain in the neck. You don't know what you're talking about. You're disturbing everyone. They don't understand that there was faith and vision in his heart, so they limit the vision in his life. And see, the crowd around you, will always try to limit the size of the vision inside of you. Always. It will always try to limit the size of that. You, you, because something awakens in you, and when you get back with them, they try to pull you back to usual, normal life. They're okay with Bartimaeus on the side of the road. Check this out. They're okay with Bartimaeus begging. They're okay with Bartimaeus just sitting there nicely. But they're not okay when he starts to have vision and wants to do something a little bit different. No, 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 wait, you can't do that. No, this isn't right. No, are you sure you can? No, I, I, this isn't appropriate. This isn't the time. I don't think you're the one. And they start limiting the vision to Bartimaeus. Like, what if he gave up? What I love is he just pushes through. The Bible says the crowd just stirred him up. He just kept shouting louder and louder and louder. No, you're not going to limit my vision. You're not going to stop what God's put in my heart. You're not going to limit it. You know, there are some people in your life that will constantly pull you down to the way you used to be. And no matter how many breakthroughs you have in church, those people you're around, they just keep pulling right back down to the same point. Sometimes you just got to get new friends. I think Bartimaeus realized. That's why immediately he's healed. He goes, I'm not even going back. I'm following Jesus. You guys are suckers. I'm out of here. <laughs> just follows Jesus down the road. Leaves all his blind friends. Leaves all the crowd. He doesn't care about his family. Like, none of you guys were helping. Like, he just walks away. Many times, vision away because we get pulled back down just because of the environment. It makes people uncomfortable when you can see something that they can't see. When something awakens in you, they, they, it's not awakening inside. It makes them uncomfortable. You can't process it. Don't understand it. Because they're used to the person that you were. But God is interested in the person that he wants to make you to be. Come on, are you hearing me? This is important because th there's an opportunity like this every single Sunday. We stand in the presence of God. And all of a sudden, God starts changing things in our heart. And the minute you walk out the doors, you've got a decision. Am I going to go back to be the person I was? Or am I going to be the person that God made me to be? Hmm. Let me let that sink in for a minute. Some of you are here for the first time. Check this out. You've never even invited Jesus in your heart. And today's an opportunity for you to come face to face with a Savior that can change your life forever, just like Bartimaeus. So this morning is a morning where you can encounter God and your life can turn around forever. You've got a decision. Am I going to be the person God called me to be or just go right back to how I used to be? So you need to think about canceling your lunch plans and get some new friends right now. I'm just saying. See, as long as you're focused on the crowd, your vision will always be limited. It will always be limited. Even if 
Even if you try to get to the, if you just focus on what they're saying, what they're expecting, what's normal, what they're comfortable with, what others expect of me, what they want from my life, he can never, he just tries to stop the vision, the crowd will limit the vision. Maybe you've been in a situation where you go, man, God's speaking to me, he's calling me to this, he wants me to do that, and then everyone's kind of just pushes you back, pushes you back. And I think today's the day God wants to just remove limitations from our vision. Second thing that stops our vision is not just the crowd, but how about this? It's, it's actually comfort. It's your comfort. You know, where Bartimaeus was, it was comfortable, so to speak. It was familiar. He knew exactly what life was like in that place. He knew what it was like to beg in that moment. He knew what to expect from daily asking for people money. He knew what to expect when big crowds came, small crowds. He knew what to expect when there was a, a festival coming up and there would be crowds of people coming into Jerusalem to celebrate these holy festivals. It, it was comfortable. There was a rhythm to that life. And yet, if he gets too caught up in his comfort, his vision can never come to pass. And there's this moment where he goes, Jesus is coming. He's a healer. This is the Messiah. And Jesus even asked him, what do you want? But I think before Jesus even asked him, that question's already in Bartimaeus' heart. What do I really want to do? Do I want to be healed? Do I want a breakthrough? Do I really want to change? Because change is uncomfortable. Change is uncomfortable. Has anyone ever sat in your seat in church? Change is uncomfortable. You've been sitting in that seat so long, it's actually formed to the shape of your body. <laughs> And you go into the seat next to it, it's like, it's just not the same, you know? It's a little stiff. I'm not sure, you know, change is uncomfortable. Come on. Yes. You ever, you have that favorite cocker stall, that favorite place you eat, and when you go there and it's closed and it's like, my brain can't even function. I don't know what to order. I'm not sure what to say. It's just, change is uncomfortable. I mean, it, it, makes, it makes people uncomfortable when they have to change. But Bartimaeus' vision would cost him his comfort, and your vision would cost you your comfort too. He had to get out of that location, out of everything he knew. The Bible says when Jesus called him, he threw aside his coat and he came to Jesus. It represented everything he had been up to that point, right? Everything he had been. It was the sign of him being a beggar. It's a government issue coat. You're registered. As someone that's allowed to that can give you the coat. And so this is precious to him. And you throw it aside as a blind man, you may never get it back again. Never get it back. And he goes, I don't want my comfort. I don't want what I do. I don't want where I've been. I want to see. I want the vision that God put in my heart. I want the promise that came into my life. Listen, your vision may take you into uncomfortable situations. Your vision might be to see your family come to Christ. Your vision might be to serve God on the mission. Your vision might be for God to use you in your place of work and really break through inside of your life. Your vision might be to change internally in your mind and heart and emotions. And it may bring you into uncomfortable situations. But if you're not willing to break through out of that barrier of comfort, your vision will always be limited in your life. Don't sacrifice a God-given vision for the comfort that you're experiencing today. It's not worth it. The Bible says, for the joy set before him, Jesus endured the cross. Not comfortable, but he had a vision. His vision was you. His vision was me. Come on, listen to me. If you've never received Jesus in your heart, we're talking about a Savior that hung on a cross and gave his life because he saw that you could come to know Him. He saw that you could be forgiven, that I could know Him, and because of that, He endured everything to bring us here. Now, many times our comfort limits the vision that God's placed inside of us. Your comfort. How about this last one? Not just the crowd and your comfort, but the third thing I wrote down that limits our vision is the lack of conviction. The lack of conviction. Conviction is something hard to find now. Conviction is something pretty rare. Most people kind of go with the flow. Whatever most people agree with, whatever most people think, we just kind of change to suit the environment around us. But real conviction is, is something that, of an anomaly. And that's why in our culture and generation, we tend to gravitate to extreme examples. People will follow extreme 
celebrities. Because they seem, even though their beliefs are odd, yet they have some sort of conviction in their life. And that's so rare and so unique. But vision actually requires conviction for me to see it through to the end. And what I love about Bartimaeus is this. We have someone come on the piano this morning. He had a conviction that Jesus could heal him. He had a conviction. He began to shout, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. It's quiet. He just shouts loud. Not trying to be a nuisance. Not trying to disturb but because there's a conviction in his life about what could happen. Is there a conviction in your heart about the vision God's given you? Was there a moment that God called you, he spoke to you, he stirred you, and somewhere along the way, you didn't have the conviction to follow it through, and today he's stirring you up again? Was there a moment that God placed a dream and a vision in my life that maybe the crowd shouted so loud, maybe it was so uncomfortable that after a while I didn't have the conviction to really follow through and just step into the things that God had for me. He had a conviction about his vision. And what I love about it is he didn't just have a wish, he had faith. Come on, everybody say faith. Jesus looked at him and said, your faith is healed. He didn't say, hey, you shouted really loud, so I'll heal you. He didn't go, oh, wow, you, you walked all the way here as a blind man. You're really passionate. I'll heal you. He said, your faith has healed you. Jesus saw something on the inside of Bartimaeus that no one else could see. Everyone could see the need on the outside. Everyone could see the person he was shouting, screaming. But Jesus goes right to the inside. Oh, there's faith. Oh, there's conviction. Oh, there's something in such tenacity in such. I see you really believe that I can heal you. He goes, what do you want? Jesus is the Son of God. He doesn't need to ask Bartimaeus what he wants. Jesus knows what he wants. I think he asked him to draw it out so everyone can hear. Because I see a conviction inside. I want you to say it. I want them to hear it. I want everyone to know what kind of person you are. What do you want? What do you want? He goes, I want to see. I want a miracle. I want vision. I want you to come and, and, and answer the cry of my heart. I want something supernatural to break through inside my life. It was faith that healed him. And so the question this morning is, hey, maybe, maybe the crowd isn't really the problem or your comfort, but is there a conviction in your life about the vision that God has given you? Is there a conviction that this is truly what I've called to be? This is really, God, what you want to give me? Because circumstances around you will always try to limit the vision inside you. But conviction is an internal decision. Conviction will move you beyond the limitations of your life. Conviction will move you beyond what you've known in the past. In this past. I believe today God wants to come just begin to stir up vision in you know.